Hi, this is Aaron Newcomb, and on this episode of Floss Weekly, Guillermo Aramal joins me to talk about Skitch. It's a project that's really designed around database change management, something that's desperately needed uh, if you're running any sort of uh, database that has lots of changes. So you're not going to want to miss this episode. Stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Aaron Newcomb and Guillermo Aramal. Episode 309, recorded on September 17th, 2014. Skitch. Hi and welcome to this edition of Floss Weekly. I'm Aaron Newcomb sitting in for Randall Schwartz. And uh, thanks for joining us. It's good to be back. It's always great to be here on the Twit Network, especially when we're talking about open source software, which we always do here on Floss Weekly. And uh, we've got a great guest today we're going to bring on just a minute. But before we get started, let's bring on my co-host. Guillermo, are you there? Yes, I am. Hey, there he is. Hey, this is oh, the first yeah. time we've been on together. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, should I hold my ear, though? I'm on remote, you know? Oh, that's right. The, the remote reporter, yeah, the roving yes. reporter, Guillermo. He's on scene right now at his house. Yes, from Tijuana, Mexico, uh, my lab here, 90 degrees hot. So I'm sorry if you see, you guys see me sweat. It's glisten. <laughs> it's glisten. It's not sweat. Yeah, I mean, I did hear it was awfully hot down in L.A., so you guys must be getting uh, a lot of that too, right? Yeah, yeah, it's 50% uh, humidity and uh, 90 degrees, so wow. it's not, not nice. Ugh. That's awful. That's why I love it here in San Francisco, but I won't yeah. <laughs> I won't I won't make you hate your life too much in terms of the weather. And this isn't a weather report anyway. It's all about <laughs> open source software. So let's get right to it. Let's bring on our guest. It's a great show we have today, actually. This is a project. Um, I think it's called Skitch. We'll have to talk about that and see what the actual name is. But um, it has to do with database uh, change management. So we talk a lot about different types of databases on this show, MySQL and PostgreSQL, and, and sometimes we even mention Oracle, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> that's mostly my fault because I work a lot with Oracle <laughs> at my day job. Uh, but we talk a lot about databases, and uh, one thing we don't talk a lot about is change management. What happens when you actually have changes you have to make? It's important to stay on top of that, and we'll find out why in just a minute. So let's bring on our guest, uh, David Wheeler. David, are you there? I am here. Awesome. Where are you speaking to us from? I'm speaking to you from beautiful Portland, Oregon. Oh, wonderful. How's the weather up there? Hot. It's hot up there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite yeah. as humid as Tijuana, but... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess uh, I'm just living in paradise these days. If we could just get some, some water, we'd be all set. Uh, yeah. It would be paradise. So tell us, about, uh, tell us about your project. Give us the overview. What is it? Why, how long have you been working on it? Why did, how did this get started? I've been working on Sketch for three years. But it started percolating in my mind many, many years before that. I'm a, I'm a database guy, and I like to take advantage of deep features of the database, like stored procedures and views and uh, custom types. And um, most um, migration systems I've used in the past, um, they would often have like many languages or um, run behind what uh, SQL could offer or use numbered versions. And none of that really worked very well for me. I really wanted to write changes in SQL directly, which I think is a perfectly good DSL. Um, and uh, so I started a few years ago thinking about how one might use uh, a Git kind of interface and history to determine what to deploy to a database. And um, I went to my boss at uh, work and I said, we're going to be doing a lot more database stuff, getting off of Oracle, switching over to Postgres, and I have an idea for this tool, and I think I can get it done in a couple of weeks. And so six months later, I had it done. <laughs> <laughs> you know how those things go. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had to rewrite it and re-architect it many, many times. Wow. But it's solid now. Well, that's good. That's, that's what yeah. we want to hear. So tell us, I mean, in general, for those that don't know database, maybe we should start here. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to get to the name, though, to figure out that part of it. But tell us exactly what this does. So pretend I don't know anything about databases, and uh, you had to explain. Give me the elevator pitch. What, what does this actually help me do? Well, I think of a database not so much as dumb storage as uh, like an application development environment. And like any 
programming language or application server, you need to be careful about how you make changes to it. And that particularly becomes true for a system where you're storing data all the time because you want to make sure you don't break the data. So what Skitch does is it provides a way to manage scripts uh, for deploying changes to a database or reverting changes to a database. And uh, it uses a, a file to keep track of what changes it needs to make in the proper order. And it can manage things like dependencies and dependencies on other Skitch projects. Um, for somebody who doesn't understand databases, you know, I hadn't really thought about that. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of the this is kind of the important part. I mean, it's it's something that you know in it, uh, you know I work with every day is trying to mm -hmm. trying to drill down on taking these these guys that are very technical, taking what they yeah. give me and telling people about it in common everyday speak, um, in terms of you know okay, so your thing can do X bits per minute or megabits and gigabits and what is that? And then you get a CIO coming to you and saying, okay, look. I need to do, I need to sell more widgets. Uh, I need to make sure that my business doesn't go down. I need to make sure that yeah. I'm, I'm innovating quickly enough uh, because my competition is, is out to eat my lunch, you know? And uh, so those are the kinds of things that I, that I translate. So that's kind of the way my mind works. Um, in, Let me when see I if I can pitch things. it to you that way a little bit. Okay. Uh, you don't want your business to fall over. You want to make sure that the way your systems are maintained, including your databases, is exactly the way they should be. So Skitch is a system uh, developed and modeled kind of on the Git interface, which is friendly for developers, but uses a technology similar to the Git history or the Bitcoin uh, blockchain to ensure that changes are always deployed in a deterministic order. And if you change anything uh, by removing something or moving things around in the history, you won't be able to make any more changes. So it ensures that things stay exactly the way your developers think they need to be in order to keep your systems up and performing well. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, we've got a commercial. You've got your elevator pitch down now. See, we're helping <laughs> you out here on this show. Thanks, we want man. you to succeed. Um, okay, so now that we know what this is, essentially, and what it does for a business, what uh, types of databases do you actually integrate with at this point? So our uh, first targets were Postgres and SQLite. And uh, I was mostly targeting SQLite because I like it a lot, but also to make sure that it could support multiple engines. But since then, I added support for Oracle 10 and MySQL 5.6. And uh, recently, uh, Firebird support was added thanks to uh, a contributions from Stefan Suchu. And Last week, I released a new version that supports Vertica, Ooh. which is the Postgres fork column database currently owned by HP. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're using that a lot at work. And I said to my colleagues, I said, well, maybe it's time we have proper change management for those things too, because they're starting to go to production. Yeah, I mean, column-based uh, uh, database schemas became all the buzz, you know, maybe, yeah. what, like five years ago, they started popping up with, uh, what was I think it was Infobright. Was it Infobright at the time was doing it um, from Sounds an open right. source standpoint? Mm -hmm. And then uh, I know at least Oracle jumped on the bandwagon um, with columnar compression and things like that. So right. um, yeah, columnar is, a, is, is very interesting. So that's really cool that you're supporting um, some of those newer technologies as well as things like, um, uh, I think you mentioned SQLite. I mean, they're kind of like on yeah. the opposite ends of the spectrum, aren't they? Uh, they are. Yeah, I mean, SQLite is designed to be an embedded database, and Vertica is designed for online analytic processing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's just break down a little bit what changes we're actually talking about. So now we can get a little bit deeper into the folks that are watching that, that may be familiar mm -hmm. with running their own uh, database or set of databases uh, on a server or something. So what kind of changes? Are we talking about changes like going from one database version to the other, or are we talking about actual schema changes like moving date, you know, moving things around within the database. Uh, what kinds of changes are we talking about? Well, one of the key philosophical tenets of Skitch is that it has no opinions about what database you use. And as a result, the changes that you make to it are all managed through scripts that are native to your database system. So for Postgres, you're going to write scripts for SQL scripts for PSQL. For SQLite, you'll write them for the SQLite 3 client. Uh, for uh, Oracle, you'll write them for SQL Plus. 
And the nice thing about this is that you have all the flexibility of your native database system. And that means you can do anything that those clients allow you to do. So the primary design goal for it was to do schema change management. And that is primarily what it is used for, creating tables, functions, indexes, views, all those sorts of things. But we also use it for, uh, uh, you know, a data that should be common to a database uh, and isn't often changed. Uh, you know, lookup tables and that sort of thing, like uh, state codes or something. Um, so we put those, you know, you might have a, a change that creates a table called states, perhaps. And then you might have another change that inserts the state values into it. So, yeah, it'll do anything that those... Uh, Clients will do, which is pretty much all of SQL for your particular database engine. Yeah, I want to just bring in a question from the audience, actually, that uh, yeah. could be, or from the chat room, that could be very interesting, too, um, in terms of, uh, it's kind of a, um, uh, well, you'll, you'll see when I get to it. It's, it's from RetroD, and he says, is Skitch using a database for its configuration management repository? Uh, excellent, excellent question. So the three components to storage for Skitch. One is basic configuration and that uses a git style configuration file like git config. Uh, the second is the plan file. This is a file where each line lists uh, the name of a change, all of its dependencies, who added the change to the plan and when it was added, and a, and a short note. And you can also tag changes in there, which is important for release management. And the third piece of it, of course, is the database itself. And what Skitch does is it keeps a record of everything it's done in the database uh, you're deploying to. Depending on um, which engine you're using, it will use a different part of the database. So for Postgres and Oracle, it creates its own schema within the same database you're deploying to. Uh, on uh, SQLite and Firebird, it creates a separate database file. Uh, and in MySQL, it creates a, another database entirely to mm -hmm. keep track of its, its data. And the nice thing about this is even if you, you do a deploy and you deploy all the changes and you can uh, uh, enter the status command, and it'll show you the status of the deployment. If you revert all the changes, the status will show nothing's there. But then there's a separate log command that shows all the deploys, reverts, failures, and successes that you've done throughout the history of that database. That's really which interesting. Which allows you to have a nice audit trail. Yeah, no, that's really perfect, actually, for people when things do go wrong, because they always will, to yes. be able to go back and say, oh, well, this was pushed out on such and such date, and it was doing this. And right after that, we started having problems with not being able to find something in the database. That's right. So it actually is is quite important to be able to go back and uh, track those things. Yeah. But I want to zero in on something you just said. So you can deploy it. it, it it's deployed in different ways on top of different databases, uh, depending on how you deploy it. But mm -hmm. what about the management aspect? So let's say I deploy it on MySQL. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've got my system set up and running. How can I control changes to other databases, even though I only deployed it on MySQL, or am I limited to using it with MySQL if I deploy? So in other words, I have to deploy multiple instances on, mul on top of multiple databases. Talk about deployment a little bit here. Well, so because the scripts that are used for each change, and there are three sc basic scripts for each change, is it a, a deploy script and a revert script and a verify script, which you can use to verify that your deployment actually worked. Those are written in the native syntax for your database engine. So typically, if you're supporting multiple database engines, you'll need to have a separate plan file and change scripts for each one. Hmm. You can keep all those in a single project, and you can use a single configuration file that has listed as targets, which are kind of similar to um, uh, Git remotes. You can have URIs identifying your database targets, and those will pick out the proper uh, top-level directory, or soon will anyway. It's a change I plan for uh, each database engine. Mm -hmm. But you do have to write separate scripts for each one unless sure. you stick to really brain-dead SQL. Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking, like, you know, is it is it more of a federated management system where you, you set the system up once and then... Um, but it sounds like you have to be... You have to have your scripts loaded and ready to go um, on each system where you want to yes. actually implement the changes. I guess that's what I was getting at. So I can't just deploy it on some standalone server somewhere. Um, yeah. And then it pushes the scripts out, ma you know, magically to the to the systems, and, and runs them, and then comes back and tells you what happened. You have to actually get right. your scripts loaded on each system, or get the system get it set up on each system that you want yeah. to, you want to go do these changes to. This isn't like Puppet; it's more like right. uh, Git, right, and right. Uh, it has a bundle command, which uh, what it does is it copies all the 
change files and uh, the configuration and the um, plan into a directory which you can then zip up. So the way we do it in my office, because we have a lot of databases running now, is we have a Jenkins job that runs whenever changes are made to the Git repository for a Sketch project that uh, does a deploy and a uh, revert to make sure that all works and then uh, and runs tests. Um, and then it bundles it up into an RPM, which can then be installed from our YUM repository, any server that needs it, including via uh, Puppet distribution. Hmm. So it doesn't handle deployment automation. Uh, it just its its main focus is specifically on change management. Right, right. There was another question from uh, the chat room. Gray five eighty asked about it, whether this was similar to DB dot proj in Visual Studio. <laughs> I'm not a Visual Studio person, so I don't know what that means. Um, I don't either. Okay. Well, I, I always try to get the questions from the audience or from the yeah, uh, yeah. chat room in because we love having them on board. So I'm just not sure. I, I, I'm not sure what that is. I'm just not a. I've never been a Visual. Uh, you know, Microsoft kind of programming language person, so I, I just don't know what that means. Um, so uh, let's get back to implementation. I mean, it sounds like if I want to, how large of a, of a um, how, how does this scale? I guess if we're implementing these uh, on each system, it really could scale infinitely, I guess, if you, if you wanted to do that, right? Yeah, how many Git remotes can you have for a right. single repository? Yeah. And then, do you, is the similar? Is it a similar system in terms of um, you know when I want to go out and run things? I'm thinking with Git. You know, you do a Git pull and mm -hmm. and you pull all that stuff down. I mean, all of that. The the the, the analogy kind of remains locked in um, with Git at that point. Is if I'm thinking about how I actually go about setting this up. Well, there are two sides of it. There's you know deployment management to your actual databases, but then there's also managing the Sketch project itself, which is very much focused on a project in the version control system uh, sense. And so it has some smarts built into it so that it can integrate well with, with those. For example, um, one of the big challenges that I've always had with other migration systems is managing stored procedures and, and views. Because if I want to create uh, if I want to make a single line change to a 300 line stored procedure, that typically requires I have to make two new copies of it and make a, then my change in a new file and uh, have a copy in the revert script as well. And Sketch is a little more intelligent about that. It makes two copies as well, but you edit the original one. And that becomes the version uh, for the new change as opposed to um, the, the new file is what is for the old version of the change. But the other thing is that another challenge I've had with other migration systems is that they tend to feel like once you have committed it to your version control system, it's locked in forever. And uh, I do iterative development on my databases just like I do in a programming language. And so I wanted to have the liberty to be able to make changes liberally until I do a release. And <clears throat> so to mark a release in Sketch, you, you tag a release. And then that's a promise implicit that you won't make any changes to the plan or any of the changes that appear before that tag and only changes going forward. That probably didn't answer your question very well. Well, no, I think it did. <laughs> I mean, even if it didn't, it was interesting to hear. I mean, it's always, you know, this is such a tricky subject, right? And, yeah. and, and just as in life, um, in IT shops, we are risk averse, right? So yeah. we don't want to change everything. But at the same time, it's a balance, right? And I think this applies to all yeah. open source projects. It's like, um, you know, you, you got to figure out, okay, we want to, we want to, uh, you talk about iterating fast or quickly, you know, you iterate mm -hmm. a lot, you know, and it's like, well, that goes, that flies in the face of this risk averse um, uh, uh, nature that we have. And so right. it's really interesting. It's always interesting to me to hear people talk about um, how you manage change, whether it's in a project or in this case, actually implementing changes to a database. Um, you know, it's like, yeah, you, you want to iterate quickly, but then at some point you've got to put the stops on it and say, okay, yeah. wait, from, from this point forward, we're going to assume that everything behind this is locked in. <laughs> right. I want the developer, while she is doing development, to have the luxury to make changes, radical changes, without any adverse effects to anybody but herself. Mm -hmm. um, but then once it gets tagged and released and put on other servers, as you're continuing, you, the new changes you make, you can be as radical as you want, but the stuff that has been released, you don't touch. Right, 
Right. Yep. Um, there was another thought. Retro D in the chat room had another thought because he heard you say RPMs. Um, what yeah. platforms do you support um, in terms of OSs? Uh, any platform on which Perl runs. Oh, awesome. So I could go all the way back to uh, my, my days administering HPUX or, or AIX then. If you like, or you can install Active Perl and install it as a PPM, and you'll have it. Right, right. On and Windows and Windows, right? For people that don't know Active Active State or Active Perl, that's a, the Windows implementation. Right. So cool, cool. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to Guillermo now and see if he has any questions for you. Yeah. So, um, well, I, I'm going to guess the uh, first question I have is: uh, I'm not a database guy myself. I'm more into mm -hmm. uh, embedded uh, software and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so let's say let's say I'm a newbie because I am really. <laughs> Right, <laughs> and uh, my my limit, uh, my database uh, database knowledge limits up to maybe SQL, SQLite, and and MySQL, right? Right. So uh, let's say I want something graphical for this. Is is there any way, any any side project you have working, uh, you know, in the back burner, that'll let me uh, manage my database using something graphical? Let's say. Of course, I'm I'm not scared of of uh, you know console hacking myself, but I, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people who just you know wants. Something graphical, maybe you know, you can track your changes, uh, see what's going on there, and adjust scripts some way, maybe. I hope so. That would be awesome if lots of people wanted that. It means success. Uh, I have not, but uh, Stefan Suchu, who developed a Firebird engine for uh, Sketch, has started working on a window windowing application for Sketch that will allow you to see your plan and the status of things in the database. I think it's mostly a layer over the, the command line interface, and I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. I've been too busy, but it looks really promising as a way to give, uh, you know, the normals, if you will, a way to have more visibility into it. But the other thing is, I mean, all the data is in the database itself or in the plan file, and it's not, it wouldn't be difficult for anybody to implement something to parse the plan file or connect to the database and, and execute a few queries to look at things as well. So uh, contributions welcome. <laughs> well, let's say. Uh, well, you mentioned that this was somewhat similar to uh, to Git, right? Uh, in its interface, yeah, and some of its philosophy. Okay, so I, I can get push and stuff like that. Let's say if I want to make any changes to a database, is there any way to do like a Git diff? If I make a change to a database now, after let's say we have our last commit, our last database yeah. database change commit. Is there a way to you know get a diff from that and maybe get it to generate our our uh, you know update script or alter our table script? No, Sketch does not do that sort of diffing of uh, deployed databases. So you that, you have uh, to know what you're doing then. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, you have to know what you're doing, and there are some other tools for that. That seemed like a way to have to have extremely deep understanding of the current list of objects that are available in any given database system. And that just was outside the scope of what I was trying to accomplish with, with Sketch. OK, OK. I, I don't want to put you in any you know, spot. <laughs> I'm so bad I failed. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, why? So uh, OK, so uh, uh, let's say if I want to track back uh, through changes somebody made, is there yeah. any, any forking or, or branching? Let's say if somebody makes a change, you make a change. Do you, do, are, are you able to merge those changes some way, or are they, you know, maybe numbered, or how how, do, how does the history work on on us on uh, Sketch? They are the changes are emphatically not numbered because that just seems like a big steaming pile of mess that I didn't want to get into. Um, every change is listed in the plan file, and each change is listed on a single line, which means that it's relatively easy to do merges. Uh, of branches. So if you have a developer working on one branch and a developer working on another, and they both made changes to plan file, when they uh, go to merge it into their, you know, master branch or trunk, uh, doing the fixing any uh, conflicts should be relatively straightforward to do in the plan file. Uh, in Git, there's actually a, a setting you can uh, make to the git config file to make it just kind of force emerge. And be again, because the lines, uh, it, it's completely line oriented, which is friendly for diffing and patching. As long as there are no dependencies between the two branches that these two people have been working on, they could interleave the changes into the, into the uh, plan file and it'll just continue to work. So I was definitely trying very hard to make it something that would work well within a version control system to make it 
pretty straightforward to make changes. And you don't have to like say, who's got this number or, you know, do we have the t- same timestamp on the file or, you know, the, 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 uh, I didn't want to use like an XML file because merging would be a nightmare. I tried to keep things simple and straightforward so developers could easily make uh, changes and, and merge them. Okay. How, how hard would it be to, let's say, add another backend to your, uh, to sketch? If I, let's say I have a, a different database that's not supported right now, uh, I'm guessing you you have this in some sort of uh, maybe a Git repo, repo where somebody can, you know, uh, send yes. you a pull request. And But how hard would it be to, you know, to actually implement that in there besides the n- knowledge that it's written in Perl now? <laughs> it depends. Um, it's on GitHub, of course, under my account. Um, and but that is how the Firebird engine was contributed. I've done the other engines, but as I said, it depends. The Oracle and MySQL once took me a while because I'm not as familiar with those databases, so I had to do a fair bit of work to understand what were the difference the differences are. Because internally, it does quite a bit of stuff to properly manage the tables that it stores its its data its own data in it, uh, which I'm calling the registry for uh, its changes. But, but I mean, like I did Vertica, uh, the Vertica port last week or the week before, and that one went relatively straightforward. Most of my time was taken up getting Vertica running. But once that happened, because most of its features are very similar to Postgres or Oracle, I was able to borrow from those engines to make things work. And there is a core uh, SQL engine that these uh, classes can all uh, uh, inherit from effectively that will handle a lot of the common SQL. That's a, it's almost entirely, that's how the SQLite one works. So I figured that was a decent baseline for SQL. And the others can just override the methods where they need to have their own um, techniques for doing things in the database. But, you know, I've been looking at whether I want to do it uh, for Cassandra CSQL or something like that, and that would be completely different. And I think it'd take me a while to, to do because it's, uh, it's not really a relational database. It's SQL is a quite different. Its command line um, clients are not as robust as the older uh, relational database clients. So that might take a while. So it's, there's a lot of variation depending on how familiar you are with the database and, and its flavor of SQL or non-SQL. So is, is there a way, let, okay, let's say, let's say I have a uh, server right now set up using a, a sketch, right? Mm-hmm. And I have another backup server set up, and I want to be able to push the changes I have on this one to the other. Do I still do I have to use this uh, packaging, uh, this packaging method you mentioned before to be able to you know zip everything up and pass it over there, or or is there a simpler way, you know, like a git push to a different remote type deal? Uh, git, uh, sk- excuse me, git. Skitch does not care how you get its files somewhere. Skitch itself has to be installed on the server you're going to run it on. But as for the package that contains your project, you can, it, it, all my projects are in Git repositories. So I could just do a Git pull on remote servers and then run it. It, it doesn't care. Oh, okay. So that, that makes it a lot easier, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, let's say, uh, how, how uh, easy to, you know, get installed is, is Sketch? Is, uh, is, can I get it in CPAN maybe? Or how, how, does, how does it work? Yes. You can install it from CPAN if you're comfortable with that. Uh, last week, I discovered that there is actually uh, a Debian SID port for it, so you can get it from AppGet from Debian. Uh, there was some folks working on Red Hat RPMs as well. And as I said, there's the active state uh, versions, which will work on any system there's active Perl on, which is primarily Windows, but it runs on other systems. So it's relatively straightforward to get. Now, there are a lot of dependencies, and it, it can get a little tricky at times, but we're, we're trying to iron those out and make uh, installation as easy as possible, for, especially because it's important to have Sketch on the system from which you deploy in your production environment. So it's got to be easy to get there. This can't just be the developer thing. So we did have another, uh, we had another question from the audience, mm-hmm. um, which was, uh, this is... Uh, Steven in HK, I assume HK means Hong Kong, I don't know. But uh, mm. he says that they use Sketch at work and they're considering a move to a branch per issue with mm-hmm. Git. And mm-hmm. so, for example, what he's talking about is he's got a bug fix for a particular API version or something, you know, that mm-hmm. only applies there. 
Right. So how would that work with Sketch? Well, I, it depends on the project, I suppose. Uh, some folks do a Sketch project as part of a larger project. So they'll have like their, their ORM system and their whole app server system and then a separate uh, directories in the same project for Sketch. And so I imagine a lot of those issues are just for the app server, in which case it doesn't matter what, what happens with Sketch. If it is a change you're making to Sketch and the Sketch plan, then it really is just about the branching issue and making sure that uh, when you merge things back into uh, the branch where you're going to be preparing things to release, that you resolve the conflicts. But again, because the changes tend to be straightforward and uh, Atomic, they shouldn't overlap with each other unless somebody uses the same change name. You pick a change name when you uh, create, a, add a change to Sketch. And so it's, it's useful to make them long or arbitrary or name them for your issue if that's helpful to you. So there, there are certainly ways to, to deal with it, but it mostly comes down to good version control system management, less so than worrying so much about Sketch change management. So I had another question because we keep talking about Perl and CPAN and Active State. Why did you choose Perl? Is it just what you knew? I mean, we kind of have to do Randall some, some, uh, <laughs> you know, give him some. Because if he was here, of course, he'd be jumping all over this. I'm sure he'd have lots of Perl questions. You know, how did you implement this? And well, what? How did you do your variables? Uh, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? How did? Why did you pick Perl? I'm just kind of curious. I could get really nerdy about that, of course, and I'm sure <laughs> Randall and I could just like bore the hell out of everybody else. <laughs> Uh, I did it in Perl because I'm deeply familiar with, with Perl. I've been using it for 20 years, and I'm comfortable with it. And I knew that the DBI module would be great for connecting to just about any database I could ever want to deal with. Um, but, I mean, more important, or just as importantly, it has excellent uh, Unicode support and a huge community. I've already getting contributions and bug fixes and that sort of thing. And there are a lot of database geeks in, in the Perl community as well, who I think will get a lot of use out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And I've always I've always found that Perl integrates really well with any kind of SQL database. Um, some of my earliest Perl scripts were actually, I needed a database backend. Um, right. And so um, I think it may actually been one, one of the reasons I first started learning Perl was because I read online that it did integrate so well with databases. Mm -hmm. um, and the modulars were so well written that you could do just about anything you needed to do programmatically um, to a database from within Perl. I think that may be the reason I started with Perl, actually. So, Yeah, um, me too. Matt yeah. props to Tim Bunce for the DBI module. It's amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I started with. So uh, really good stuff. So um, the other question I had for you was in terms of the name itself. I know we said we were going to get here. Oh, yeah. And we, we kind of we, we just got into the details so quickly that we forgot. Why did you come up with Sketch? Where did Sketch come from? You know, naming things is hard. I spend a lot of time thinking about what to call things, the names to give to classes and methods, probably an inordinate amount of time. Uh, for this particular uh, project, I wanted something to, that was short and sweet, but also unique and would represent the project. And what it came down to it was a kind of an amalgam of all the things I've been seek, thinking about when doing it. I wanted SQL change management, with VCS integration, which you could think of as like SQL and Git and change. And you kind of mash those together and you get sketch, mm -hmm. at least in my mind. Yeah, I think the name, I think the name works. I mean, it's definitely, it is representative of what the, of what the uh, uh, project is, um, right. it, which is what you want, right? But it, it, it's also very catchy. I mean, do you ever, you ever get any calls from Disney on, you know, hey, I, <laughs> I don't think you should be using that name. Uh, you might want to no. cease and desist or anything. <laughs> well, it's got a Q. What, what could go wrong? That's true. That's true. It's, it sounds the same, but it's not spelled the same. So that's that's you're on, Stitch, you're isn't on it? Solid ground. Is it Stitch Lilo or Skitch? And Stitch? Oh, uh, maybe it's Stitch. So I don't know. So there's Skitch with a K, which is a snapshot application and web service. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard from them either. Okay, well, you're on good. You're on good terms then with everybody. Well, I'm, I'm under the radar too. That's true. That's true. For now, for now, yeah. we're changing that right here today. Oh um, yeah, I'm gonna get the, the floss bump. That's right. That's right, the floss <laughs> bump. We're gonna use that from now on, by the way. Oh, uh, you yeah, you uh, can have that one. We're taking that one. So, who, who all is who's using this, and you know how widespread is the project at this point? Uh, I don't know exactly how widespread it is. Um, I mean, that's one of the beautiful things about an open source project, 
I know it has more stars on GitHub than any other project I have. And I have a few uh, friends in the Perl community have told me that they're using it. And I very rarely hear from them, I guess, because they have no complaints about it. <laughs> uh, so I, like I know Randall said that they're using it at his work and uh, my friends Chromatic and Ovid are using it. And I hear from people that I've actually had a few patch from an Oracle guy because he said it's been really great for helping to manage migration from Oracle to Postgres. Hmm. So he's been using it a lot. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you heard from an Oracle guy that it's that people are going yeah. from Oracle to Postgres. There's a little bit of irony there. I mean, I can understand maybe going to MySQL, right? Because they own both of those. But what? Uh, yeah, going to going to Postgres. That's interesting. Well, Postgres is a lot more like Oracle than MySQL is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Uh, it's just ironic to me. Um, yeah. So we talked about that, uh, and I just lost the, my train of thought. Oh, I know. How do people, if they want to learn about implementing this, how do they get started in terms, let's say they have a, a Postgres database, since we were just talking about Postgres. So they have a Postgres database, and um, they want to learn how to implement this. Is there? Do you have some sort of way for them to, to get started? I have tutorials for each of the supported engines that are available uh, through GitHub or CPAN or the documentation. And those take you through uh, a lot of the processes that are kind of inherent in the deeper philosophy of Skitch, including, uh, of course, managing the changes, uh, de writing deployment to revert scripts and verification scripts to make sure your deployments go as expected, um, but also merging branches and dealing with merge conflicts and uh, making revisions to existing objects like stored procedures and views. So the, I tried to be really comprehensive with those, and each one has a note saying there's going to be more. I haven't had time to add more, but I, people have told me they've been a really useful way to start. And it's a it's a complete project, uh, including I have GitHub repositories for each of the tutorials that include the, all the change files and the plan and the configuration so that it's all visible there. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody in the chat room brought up the fact that they like SQL Server because um, they yeah. like the management studio, which I assume has some of the same functions. Um, here, but now they have an opportunity to move over to an, an open source um, database mm -hmm. and use uh, similar tools. H have you thought about supporting SQL Server, or has there been any demand for that? Somebody uh, created a fork on GitHub and started on a work on a SQL Server engine. I'll have to look and see uh, how that's progressing. I, I haven't I haven't looked into it myself, yeah. but it it looked useful. And it's certainly one of my goals is to make enough of the, the foundation there to make it relatively straightforward for anybody to add support for whatever engine they wanted. Again, that's kind of drawing on the DBI model where it's you, you implement a, a driver class that does all the things that are specific to your engine and people can do that, but then the interface stays the same. Right, right. The command line interface. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do you, do you get a lot of contributions? Talk about how the the project itself is developed. I mean, it sounds like it's a little bit of a one-man show, but I may be making assumptions here. You, obviously, you have people that have their specific, like the SQL Server example for, you know, people who jump in and maybe do things. How many people are actually working on the project besides yourself? Well, I probably do 90% of the work at this point, and I did all the, the basic development, uh, you know, on my company's dime. Uh, and by the way, I, I work for a company called Iovation, and they've been extremely supportive in, in allowing me to do this, in part through selfishness, because it'll really help them with management, but uh, it's just been really useful. Um, but I'm gradually getting more contributions from others. So Stefan, who did the Fireberg port, also has been working on a Kubrit database port off and on. And uh, as I said, I've been getting patches from a couple of folks around the Oracle stuff. It's uh, It's been a trickle, but it's starting to increase and i look forward to the day when uh, there's too much for me <laughs> yeah yeah well i think it would be great it sounds like a good opportunity for people to kind of um i don't want to say make their name but i mean if there if there are other um uh databases that are not supported i mean this would be a good way yeah. it sounds like to jump in because it sounds like you've laid down the groundwork really nicely so it yeah. really just be porting over the database specific <clears throat> functions and things um yeah th that would support some you know some uh, uh, something that you don't support today, which should be pretty easy, it sounds like, to jump in and, and get started. Yeah. What about things like translation or documentation? Uh, how do you handle that, and do you need more more help in those areas? Uh, all the uh, messages that are emitted by Skitch itself are localizable. We currently have uh, 
French translation, although it hasn't been updated in a while, that uses the standard uh, GNU Git text pot file format for that. And I update those in every release. So I'd be happy to welcome more contributions for uh, the localization of stuff as people start to use it uh, in other language environments. Uh, all the documentation is written in English, of course, in pod. And I'm, I'm happy to get additions to that if people want to add more to the tutorials or uh, better document the commands because I, you know, I'm deeply familiar with it. So I'm sure I've omitted a plenty of stuff <laughs> as I've worked on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, there's some specific other, other questions in terms of community and open source. And we have to address mm -hmm. the license uh, question. What, what license is this distributed under? I think it's MIT. Oh, MIT. It's either MIT or the new BSD license. I, I think MIT. Oh, so very open then for those that uh, yeah. may or may not be familiar with open source licenses. We're talking about a, a, a very easy to distribute yeah. license model here in terms of uh, if you want to use this. Yeah, I expect to see deep integration in SQL Studio without ever hearing about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Guillermo, do you have any more questions before we wrap it up? Uh, well, let's see. Um, okay, uh, something something I had in mind. Uh, what if somebody, somebody like me wants to hire you to do this kind of work? I know you already have a day job, but let's say I want to fund a uh, fund your work to uh, for you to create a backend for a specialized uh, database I'm using. Mm -hmm. is, is that something that you know could happen? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in addition to my day job, I'm a partner in PostgreSQL experts, and I'm happy to do consulting to them, including for engines other than Postgres. So yeah, happy to do consulting around this. PGExperts.com. Well, <laughs> yeah, nice little <laughs> plug there. Yeah. <laughs> so so is, is, is this going to be something you see yourself doing in five years from now, or are, are you planning on maybe creating a business around this or, you know, I, I see a lot of open source projects right now, uh, own cloud, for example, uh, you know, they start off with a little, with a little project and they start building up a business around it. Is this something yeah. you are, you're thinking, you know, is this the way you're going with this? It's not, no, I, I mean, I don't think about like creating a business around Git, although I know that's been done. Uh, then the nice thing is that one doesn't have to, and, you know, for, for Git, the important business is to have a place to store your, uh, your repositories, your remotes. For, for databases, we already have lots of services like that, like Heroku or, or Amazon Cloud. So I've tried to make it robust enough and, and thorough enough that people don't need my help. Well, that's sad. <laughs> well, I did. We don't need you. <laughs> I had a I had a project uh, many years ago. It's still going called Bricolage, a content management system, and I founded a company to do consulting and support and training for that. And that but that went well for ten years, um, and it was a good run, and I I enjoyed it. But uh, I'm happy not to be doing that now for a while. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier, you know, just to have somebody pay your way somewhere. Sometimes right? <laughs> it's been nice to have a regular job for a while. Yes. Yeah, I, I hit the same run too. Uh, I, I did this uh, uh, consulting gig for a little while. Now I have somebody pay my bills, which is kind of nice. Yes, yes, that check comes every month. It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before the in the pre-show, you mentioned uh, you know liking to bake uh, our, our artisanal bread. Is that something yes. you wanna you you wanna talk about? Maybe uh, mention if are you planning on making this a product later? <laughs> no, no, that. I, I liked I so I bake um, sourdough loaves uh, using a yeast starter that I grew myself here in Portland, and uh, I I enjoy doing it, but mostly I enjoy the product of it, which is eating it. Oh yeah, that's that's the best part. You I don't can't think see there's the, a huge I don't think yeah, there's you, huge business opportunity in this. Uh, probably not. But who yeah. knows? You know, you can't see the uh, bottom half of my body right now, and you would probably say, "Oh yeah, yeah, I see. I see you like bread a lot too." So. <laughs> and shorts. There you go. And, oh, yeah, and shorts. <laughs> Did you see my shorts? I have to cover myself better. Oh, <laughs> well, it is hot. What do you expect? Yeah. Yeah. See, I have to be here in the studio, so they don't let me just come in in my underwear like I can when I'm at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we had this talk. Right, John. He, he says yes, no underwear allowed. Yeah. So uh, 
I have, a, I have one more question just in terms okay. of wrapping up, and then we got a couple that we have to ask, or we usually ask at the end of the show. We'll get to those too. Right. But So what's next? What are you working on now that's going to be implemented in the next, uh, or you hope that will be implemented in the next 6 to 12 months? Uh, I need to do a pretty major refactoring of the way configuration done. It's a bit of a mishmash now of what, so I mean, you can configure things through uh, the configuration file, um, the uh, URIs and command line options, and they're just kind of get mashed together. And I need to make it more hierarchical and more uh, integrated so it's clearer how things are done. It's easier to configure things, especially for targets. I want it to be able to be, you can specify a target and say for this particular target, which has a name, again, this is like Git remote. There's a URI which identifies the database connection, but then also can have information about use this directory for the plan and change files. and um, uh, use this username and password to connect and, and that sort of thing. And, and right now, it's you have to type too many options. So it's it's kind of a lot of reworking to try to make um, the integration of the options and the ability to use them in the command line easier, particularly for operations folks, so that I, I want to make it kind of as dumb as possible so they don't have to think too much about it because they got plenty of other things to worry about. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. Well, but I'm pretty happy with the overall interface. I don't feel like it needs a ton of changes. More commands would be awesome. It has commands like Git, so more could be added at any time to do interesting things. Right, right. Well, it sounds like you've you've done a good job so far. I mean, we wish you all the best in, Thank you. in the changes upcoming. And I'm sure a lot of people will be very interested in checking this out. Is there anything that we, we haven't touched on that, that you had top of mind and we just didn't get a chance to talk about? Is there anything uh, burning? Uh, for you right now in terms of things that you want to tell the audience. Now's your chance to get it out there. Yeah, no, I feel like we covered it pretty well. Um, I have to say that as somebody who is a database guy and was always frustrated in the past, I tried really hard and put a lot of thought and work into this to try to make it what I want it to be. And I hope that other people get a lot out of it as well. Yeah, that sounds like they will. Okay, let's get to the last two questions that we always have to ask. Um, and the first one is your favorite uh, scripting language. I think we can safely say what that is, but I'll let you answer. It's a dynamic language, Aaron. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm guessing Perl. Yes. <laughs> that one's not too hard. And then what yeah. about your favorite uh, text editor? What do you typically like to use? I use uh, GNU Emacs. Oh boy, Randall really missed this one. I mean, this was <laughs> this was yeah. his show. I mean, he could have geeked out on Perl and Emacs all day long. Well, and I know he's I know he's listening to this in the in the chat room, and I'm sure he's pounding his fist that he wasn't able to make it today. <laughs> but uh, well, I, I like to tell people I'm not so much of a deep Emacs user as I am a C, C Perl mode user or a SQL mode user. I, I have you know a number of. Uh, things I have customized in my .emacs file, but they're mostly pasted from elsewhere, and I put in parentheses until it works. <laughs> That's great. I love it. I love it. Well, David, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been great to talk to you, and I know that the database administrator crowd, especially in the change management crowd that will be watching this and listening to this episode will really appreciate this, and I'm sure they'll all want to go out and uh, take a look at your project. So thanks for joining us. I hope so. Thank you for having me. All right. All right, so that is Sketch and uh, the soon-to-be upcoming release from uh, Open Source Media Studios, Lilo and Sketch, um, <laughs> the change <laughs> management story. Uh, I don't know my Disney movies. I guess I'm getting old. I don't know the Disney movies anymore, the names of them. Uh, anyway, Guillermo, what did you think about Sketch? Well, mo most of the uh, most of the uh, conversation kind of went over my head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like uh, if you talk to me in C++, okay, maybe C, okay, whatever. I, I, I can I can deal with that stuff, but whatever if people start talking about uh, our, uh, you know, uh, relational database and stuff like that, I, I know what they are. I know how to use them. I can build my own database. Uh, but, you know, if you start going over MySQL, then I just start, I, I start tapering off. <laughs> You're more of a set it and forget it kind of guy, huh? Yeah, yeah. So I, I know how to. I know I can follow the rules fine. But as soon as you know, uh, it needs to. Uh, it needs to start working. Wait, let's let's add Oracle into this. I I just walk away. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let somebody else do it. Right, right. You know, it sounds like a great project to me. I mean, I, I deal with databases all day long in my day job, and so uh, change management and uh, development work um, is something that we talk about all the time with our customers. Um, because really, and this is what I was trying to get at the beginning of the 
the beginning of the show when I was trying to get him get his elevator pitch is that really um, changes in your environment are risky. People don't like that. But when it comes to development, you want to change very quickly. You want to iterate quickly so you can get to a, a newer product. And really, it's all about innovation. How fast can you innovate? Um, and having some sort of structured change management program like this, especially for databases, is really, really important. Um, and so I know that people are going to be interested in checking this project out um, uh, if they don't already have something in place, or even if they do, and they just want to check this out and see if it's better, worse, or, or maybe preferable to use an open source platform instead of a, instead of a closed port. Uh, a closed source platform for change management. Um, I think it's incredibly important to have something that you can actually look into and see what's going on. Um, and if there's problems, you can actually contribute right away to fix those because it's going to help your your company run better. Um, so anyway, I could I could go on and on about the the value of this. <laughs> well, it, it's uh, it seems a lot better than you know storing uh, uh, SQL files the way I do it. I just it, I just make copies of the uh, current state of the database every time I change it and you know yeah. push it into Git. Right. That's what I do. That's what <laughs> I do. Too. Best, yeah, <laughs> it's probably not the best way of doing it. I, I, I like this. I'm probably gonna start playing around with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I do the same somewhere. thing at home. I always I, you know I make backups. You know, not, usually weekly backups. That's all I need. And uh, you know, if something goes wrong, it's like ah, just restore it. It's it's, you know, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's not the way the world works. And for that's not yeah. the way big companies work. Certainly. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about what's coming up on future episodes of Floss Weekly. Um, actually, there's only one thing in the docket right now. I know that um, Randall's working hard on, on scheduling things, but he's been busy and, and on uh, cruises and things. He, uh, we do have Docker scheduled, uh, Solomon Hikes, I guess. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. Um, next week is coming on to talk about um, uh, something called Docker. And uh, it looks pretty interesting. It's billed as a uh, open platform for distributed applications for developers and sys admins. Um, they say that you can build, ship, and run any app anywhere. So I guess we'll be pressing them next week on whether that's actually true or not, um, and how true that is. I mean, it looks like a very interesting um, uh, project. The question is, you know, you know, why why do we need it, and and how do you actually use it? So I know I'll be tuning in to learn more about this, and I encourage everybody else to, as well. Uh, so in terms of wrapping up, why don't you go first, Guillermo, and do some some plugs and tell people where they can find more information about what you're working on. Okay. Well, if somebody's interested in what I do, which is probably not super important or or interesting, but I you know sometimes do stuff that people like. Uh, you can look for me in Twitter. That's uh, at Gamaral, G-A-M-A-R-A-L. And uh, you can also check out my About Me page. It's About Me slash uh, Gamaral. So there you go. You just Google Gamaral. I'll, I'll show up. Either me or the uh, Gamera, you know, the uh, that old uh, legendary monster. Yeah, yeah, from the uh, from Godzilla. It wasn't he a yeah, exactly. Godzilla monster? So it's, yeah. it's between me and him. We're, we're <laughs> fighting for it. <laughs> well, it looks like you definitely have a nice setup. I've, I've been... Uh, as you're talking, I'm noticing because I do a lot of, uh, you know, work on um, embedded systems, at Raspberry Pi and Arduino and all kinds of stuff. And I'm looking at your setup back there saying, ooh, I wonder what's in those little drawers. I wonder how many resistors <laughs> he has. Ooh. <laughs> I actually have like seven or eight pies in that box right there. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I need and some there's more. There's plenty of other stuff in there. In, in fact, that little shiny thing right there is uh, something I can't show people right now. Oh. It's, uh, a prototype. Cool. But it's there, so at least it's taunting you. Yeah, definitely. That's a nice <laughs> teaser. Look, yeah. watch this space here. We'll see what that shiny thing is in the future. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. We should get together and talk about our projects, I think. Yeah, man. Uh, and, and as far as I'm concerned, you can find uh, everything that I'm talking about, including all of my cool uh, open hardware projects that I work on and makerspace activities uh, at Google+. So I am Aaron Newcomb on Google+, and that's where I interact with everybody. Uh, it's a great way to ask me a question or get more information on things that I'm doing um, or just whatever you want to talk about. Uh, I'm on Google+, almost every day. Uh, but you can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Um, speaking of Facebook and Twitter, did you know you can follow this show on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, as well? You should definitely check it out and also join the IRC. Watch the show live and join the IRC channel to get your questions in in real time. And we always love to bring those questions up 
uh, during the show because um, you guys, frankly, come up with better questions than we do a lot of times, so that's great. Um, also, one more thing I want to mention is if you are in the San Francisco area at the end of the month for Oracle Open World, uh, be sure to come say hi to me. I'll be at the NetApp booth talking all about uh, all the cool things we do with Oracle, of course. Uh, but outside of that, if you just want to stop by and chat, say hello, grab a cup of coffee or something like that, I should have some time to do that. Uh, so just uh, stop on by and say hello, say you're a fan of the show. Come up and talk to one of the nice-looking young ladies that we have at the front desk and tell them that you want to talk to me. Um, and uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to chat with some folks there. So if you're in the area for Oracle Open World, please look me up. Okay, with that, it's time to wrap up. Uh, thanks for joining us, and tune in next time to Floss Weekly. Bye-bye.